Next topic though. Sales are extremely important when it comes to music or not. What do you think? Before we even get into it, what do you think? Yes. Do sales matter more than the music itself? That's a good question, man. No. I want to say no. My heart my heart and the the foresight into the comments wants me to say no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here it is. Academics explains why album number sales are important. Data responding to Lil Yachty's comment saying that we shouldn't focus on the numbers. Let's play this clip. Stop complaining about them, right? The numbers are what they are. And yes, the numbers do like contests, but the numbers are, the numbers will prove if you're doing something that's really special. It's the reason why, for example, nobody likes, nobody likes, um, if the first week projection comes out and says you're not doing good, no one likes it. But if you're projected to do 50,000 after the first day and after the fourth day, you're projected to do 65,000, they love to point out the growth. Why? It shows that there's, the numbers are going to highlight the fact that there's a change in the culture based on the music. And that's what the numbers do. The numbers is signify who's consuming it. Let me ask you this question, right? This inherent question that goes outside the music. How are we going to stop it at that before you get into the abstract question? About the tree falling in the woods and stuff like that. I think there's one comment that pretty clear. <laughs> Dream Raheem says artists love numbers and sales until they start falling off. Yeah, fast. Like yeah. artists love numbers when the numbers are high for them, or they're going up, and they don't, they don't like it when they can't play the game. Right. right? But right. that's why I say it's a weird line to walk. But I I think if you are entry level mainstream and, and the game numbers matter. If you are not or not trying to play that game, then numbers don't matter, you know? So. For me, I mean, I think there's a couple of things that by what academics said that, of course, could be fishy. You could say, well, what do the numbers really mean if somebody was using bots? What do the numbers really mean if it's about catching the algorithm and you have all these additional, like, actors, right, in the space? And I think that's where artists try to disconnect the judge of quality of music and numbers themselves right mm -hmm. which is understandable but something that academics mentioned later on in this clip when we talk about the music business money numbers matter yeah. right? it goes back to that same point hey bro keep it to yourself keep it on your hard drive if you don't want to deal in the music business right or just share it with your friends and your and all that stuff don't think about growing from a music business standpoint and navigating that if you don't want to think about the numbers that's just one thing that comes with it all right. It's why people fake numbers because they matter. I'm not even talking about that person who's just trying to appear bigger than who they are. But literally, when we talk about charts and all these other things, yeah. they matter in ways 100 percent. All right. Because you at least get to say that you had these numbers. I just saw a clip where 50 Cent in an interview was saying that. Who did he use as reference? Future. All right. He said. Yeah, I could perform my song today and it doesn't really matter how the crowd reacts. Like these songs are number ones, right? I can get paid certain things because these songs are number ones. But somebody like Future, you might say, oh yeah, the streets rock with me more than hoes, right? And they're playing my music more than hoes music. It's great because it's true in that way today. But 20 years from now, without the number one attached to it, people aren't reacting the same. You don't get to say, well, at least this thing was a number one. And you also can't flip it the same, all right? Because you can't say people are like people hire based off of those type of numbers because they want to look, cause I, I want to, I'm a company and I want to say, oh, I had some random artist that performed or whatever and look at how cool we are and say, hey, he's a number one artist, right? You get those type of accolades. Not that Future's never had any higher charting things, but 50 was referencing those specific songs. So numbers matter when we talk about real life, mm -hmm. period. Now, art itself and your judgment of it, no, you shouldn't want it to matter in that way when you're talking about your artist bag and the quality of work per se. You know, that's I think that's the thing that we go back and forth with. Yeah, I mean, there are lots of great music out there with, you know, less than 100 streams on it. You know, I've come, I come across some every couple of weeks but to me the numbers say 
two things. The typical tenants say two things to me. One, they say that people out there like the music, right? That your art, your art can can be enjoyed and consumed by others outside of yourself and your circle. And then two, it tells me that you know how to play the music industry, music business game. Mm-hmm. Right. Even if it is body, even if it is inflated, even if these numbers only high because you borrowed 20 bands from your cousin, you were able to run a marketing campaign and that's boosted it. That still says those things, right? People liked it enough for it to work and you understand how to do the things to move yourself to the next level. Exactly. Two things that like, while yes, they can't speak. Well, I guess the first one does kind of speak to the quality of the art, right? Um, but they may not always speak to the quality of the art itself, but still like very important if you are someone trying to play that game. So that's why I say like I, my biggest frustration with the numbers argument typically comes from artists who claim they want to be successful artists. It's like you, you can't want to be successful without looking at numbers. Even if album sales aren't the numbers that you're looking at, once you decide you want to be serious, you're looking at some type of number all the time, right? You're looking at maybe merch sale, streams clicks on your ads like it's always gonna be numbers in this shit and you have to learn to care about numbers to, to run a successful music business right it's a lot of math in this shit man whether people people realize it or not yeah. and so that's my gripe man if you don't care to do that like if you're someone listening and you just like making music for the fun of it and you just like putting it out and you think it's cool yeah bro like don't worry about none of this shit bro make your thing make your music do your thing but if you are someone that is like hey i would like to live off of this then you gotta care about numbers bro you have to Yeah. I mean, I think the more correct statement that people should think about, if anything, is the connecting with people is the thing that matters most. Mm -hmm. Numbers don't not matter. It's just that they shouldn't be the primary focus because they're a symptom. All right. They're not the source. So you do what you're supposed to do. The right numbers should occur. And then even if you do a little, you know, hacking or whatever, (laughs) you still it's even that is something that the numbers reflect, yeah. but it's not the root of. So, like, all right, focus on making the best music, the best product, right? Focus on connecting with people, and then you'll get what what you um, you know, you'll get what you want out of the situation. Because of course, we do know if we want to talk about the way that numbers do not matter clearly outside of just whether art is good or not. If not, you could get numbers, make something say something. And then not have that reflect real life. Oh, I got a billion streams, but what does that really mean if five people don't show up to my show? Yeah, right. Exactly. Like in that way, they don't matter for sure. So I, I don't know, man. I I feel like this numbers conversation is is going to stay a thing just because there's always going to people be people who are in flux. Today I'm happy with my numbers because I'm up, but then all of a sudden I'm unhappy, and now I got to figure out this way to validate and not feel bad about where I am Mm -hmm. if then I'm up again and I'm not even having this conversation yeah (laughs) all right last clip for the day yay oh Paul Mira I'm thinking I'm pronouncing this right I hope I am interview Usher and he talks some artist development talk now if you want to talk artist development I mean, Usher is one of those guys that you want to hear from because he really done been through it in the old school fashion. Old school. Way. Yeah. He, did he beat you down on the kid? <laughs> I don't think we need to go there. Uh, I don't, I don't think we can leave that with a love. Of the performers of the 70s and 80s, even though you're not from that era technically, like as a, as a musician. Um, and I always like every time I see a show, even before the residencies or anything, it's, you know, you're up there singing, there's lots of choreography, dancing, theatrics. I just want to know, how do you have the energy to be able to pull this off? Especially if you're going to be doing it like night after night. I'm, the last, I'm one of the last of the Mohicans, man. <laughs> yeah. you know, even though I wasn't rocking with Prince and, you know, and rocking with Sammy Davis Jr. or rocking with Michael, you know, I came from the same, you know, school of thought. Where I work, and I and I really built up the stamina to be able to do that, and the expectation that that's what being an entertainer is considered. Like you can't consider yourself an entertainer unless you sing and dance. And yes, your mic has to be on. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to literally sing into your mic, and you have to still perform and give energy and presence, and be mindful of what you're wearing, and think about you know, you know, lighting techniques and all of the things like that. That I only accelerate what your song is about. Um, 
whether it's storytelling through you know, using people or either dancers and performers or either you just standing at a microphone, the levels, that's what I got out of watching those performers in theatrical moments through the 50s. You know, and, and maybe something happened between right this theatrical theater world and entertainment and, and the segue between the two is part of the reason that we love Michael Jackson and we love mm -hmm. Gene Kelly, we love Fred Astaire, and we love you know, those earlier performances, the Nicholas Brothers and Sammy Davis Jr. And the fact that they were doing these really cool things, because that's what it was. That's what you had to be in order to be considered an ultimate entertainer. You had to be able to act. You had to be able to dance, sing and, uh, and compose incredible things. So you said a mouthful right there. It's a lot. But so I want to I'll say the area that I want to focus on personally is just to study in the game, right? Because people aren't de investing in artist development like that these days, period. So you can't even fully put it on artists to have somebody to learn from in that standpoint. I'm just saying, like, if the infrastructure is not there, like, how, where is it for you? You can't go to a Motown and then have them put you through their assembly line today. Yeah, but you can, you can look at Instagram and be like... That's what I'm saying. Okay. studying yeah okay. that's all you can do yeah. <laughs> so at least study that's what i'm saying that's all you can do if, if you can find value in that because usher obviously he went through some stuff but he he named some names he named michael jackson right uh he named fred astaire gene kelly and these are bad boys i don't you know who fred astaire and gene kelly are probably they're like you know they tap dance very old school dads and like you no know, back where we're suits. Them boys are cold. One um Gene Kelly is I'm sick. Yeah, I'm not right. right. Okay. Right. Usher yeah. copied his video except he did it on skates or whatever. They they were some cold dancers and Michael Jackson watched these same guys, right? And then of course every era has more people to watch. And what I to me, I don't I can't imagine being an artist and not having somebody to be infatuated with and inspired by because they're just so good at what they do. Not just because I like their music and I think that's something that people can't differentiate sometimes. Like the recognition of mastery versus the recognition of just connecting with somebody. Mm -hmm. It's like it's nice that you connected with this person but is this artist really cold at something? And if they are, what is the thing that they're cold at? Not just oh, every single thing they're doing. Maybe they're a great performer, maybe they're great at the lyrics, maybe they got great hooks, whatever. You look at like Gene, Fred, Michael, Bobby, both of them, right? But you just watch them and you cannot even really be a, a dancer and realize that, oh shit, like they're great at this shit. Yeah. You know, it's something different, right? And then you tie it back to being a performer, which is a greater conversation that Usher's um, sticking on. What, entertainer right that's when your value goes up yeah and i think it's a, it's a it is very much a lost art because i can't like who's the most entertaining artist we have today like who, who's who's on that level where like this next generation is looking like i want to be like that man who i can't think of nobody you know what i'm saying you just made something click in my head the way you asked that okay you said who's the most entertaining and i just thought of it literally that easily goes into personality form of entertainment versus the old school. I'm actually able to entertain on stage. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of the focus is. How can I just put on a show versus putting on a show? Yeah. Right. And you know, of course there's always going to be old school, new school, um, saying one is better than the other, but even the argument to the old school shit, they were acting and stuff too. Yeah. Sammy <laughs> Davis Jr. was acting and stuff too. It's not even like, they they didn't um care about those things and you know some of it's generational because you had usher mentioned like oh yeah i'm taking care of like the way i dress like every detail that's basically what you get from that yeah. pay attention to every single detail but then we're of a generation that oftentimes is like well why does it have to be this way just is bro yeah. it's the way we we resonate the way we click right people like to be entertained man and i think like he, 
to me, he kind of touched on the way I never thought about, like the the kind of the pillars of entertainment, right? Like acting, dancing, um, being able to sing live, and then dress pretty much, right? Those are four things. Maybe dance isn't as strong today as it was back then, because that could that could depend genre to genre. But the other three are gonna be big, yeah, forever, right? You can act, you can you can at least do great vocals live. Um, and you can you can put your style together, and then yes, yeah, like figuring out what elements of today of entertainment values today you kind of need to add on, right? So in the arts of his generation, maybe the, didn't feel the need to master, I don't know, let's say being that great on camera because they're so used to doing things. Like, I'm kind of pulling something on my ass. Especially because they did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's why I, I can't even say that. But versus like, let's say an artist today, it's like, oh, I have to be, I have to figure out how to be entertaining on my Instagram live stream, right? So different skill, a skill that really only makes sense for the day but still goes like right underneath those kind of like core um, artists, like entertainment skills. I think everybody has to have. And like, you know, I'm a I'm a show enthusiast, but I love going to concerts. I love going to like underground artist shows. And like, I maybe see one out of every like fifty acts, maybe a hundred if I really thought about it. Like embody like those things, right? And there are some that you love it. So what you love it? Because to me that sounds like damn. I'm putting myself through all this shit just to get to the goal. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, in a, in a different lifetime, bro, I was meant to be a a, a um a, a developer for artists in their live performance. Bro. I'm telling you, man, like I've I've seen so many shows and performances, like I could I could coach somebody on being a better performer, bro. I know I could. Hit them up. Nah, don't do that. Don't hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Take my gems from this video and run with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But but a lot of those things you talk about, things that artists don't do, bro. A lot of artists don't talk to the crowd, right? Which to me goes into acting. Like you, even if you're not. Even if you're nervous, like you, you can act your way through it. You know what I'm saying? You build this character. A lot of artists don't sound the way they sound in their songs or they sound live. That goes back to the vocal performance thing. A lot of motherfuckers ain't dancing nowadays, which is, I can give dance in the past. You know what I'm saying? Personally, you know what I'm saying? Depending on the type of artist you are, I can give dance in the past. But still, performing, singing, rapping, whatever, having your breath and putting on a full performance, yeah, it's crazy. That's a real thing you got to train for, which he basically said he prepped himself yeah. for. But even if you aren't dancing, right? You can go back to, I don't know, when you used to look at Vandross. Today you can look at Adele. Jay Z. Jay Z on dance. Jay Z's entertainment value is also debatable on stage. Well, vocal cadence and band of carry. It's the same as Kanye. No, I can't say that. I can't. It's the same concept. Not just, <laughs> not, not they, they are the same level of quote unquote performer, but Kanye's not a great performer by any means. But he makes up a great show. He makes up what was said is on. He's he's but that's uh, my point. <laughs> but you know I'm I, I don't feel like I don't feel like Jay Z tried to compensate for. It. I feel like he just kind of like this is me taking me as I am. I'm gonna walk on stage, be cool. Not to that same um, degree, no, by by no means. But what he do, does do well is command a room, yeah, right, and navigate those conversations in the crowd in a way that still take some level of training and get your skills up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, he's not the, the artist thing to that degree. Isn't his thing. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, go back to Kai. It's just yet another example, paying attention to other elements. Even if I'm not dancing, I still have to entertain in some way. Yeah. Then you go to the ultimate, somebody like Michael Jackson, who was doing all the Kanye shit and doing all the Chris Brown shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then singing like, I don't know, Beyonce or something, you know, or whatever. I don't know those technical levels who y'all would, cook. but like, that's why somebody like him got looked at in that way. Yeah, cause that's just crazy. When you think of it that way, that's just crazy. Like you're that's doing yeah. all of it on a high level and then that was the way they looked at it. Today, I think people don't care and then some people don't even want to do, like we know a lot of people don't even want to perform. And what's the motivation? Cause that was how you got to the bag. Today yeah. we could get to the bag in so many different ways. Stay at home. Yeah. And 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 there's more of a since fans are so like in their favorite artists' lives now, the entertainment is is that artist like individual personality in life. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to entertain me so much at the show yeah. because I'm already enthralled by the rest of your brand, seeing you in different places. And I'm kind of just here almost as a validation of the rest of our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Had to make sure you were real. Yeah, that's almost what it is. You know, like, it's, just, it's almost a formality, it seems like, in some ways. It, 
it's, it's weird. Like, even when you look at the shows where fans don't know all the lyrics, which, look, I'm not somebody who knows all the lyrics of every single song. I've never been that guy, and I'm horrible with song names. I'll know full songs and never know the name of it. <laughs> but the macro, because I, I consider myself an outlier, <laughs> most people, right, when you look at the evolution of culture, it seemed like they, they took more um, pride in knowing that stuff yeah. now. Yeah, it's like I will go to your show and not know your stuff and not just be like a hey I'm on an adventure I'll go to your show and consider myself as somebody who loves you and not know your shit I'm guilty of that See? <laughs> yeah, you're not an outlier so you don't <laughs> so you count <laughs> as a reflection I'm like every every third every third episode I realize I am the problem and I'm like <laughs> something gets, I'm like damn I do that <laughs> is it me <laughs> Bro, that, that fan relationship is different, man. It's like, I forgot who we were talking. I feel like we were talking Barry. with somebody. It's Barry, though, bro. When we was in Mexico. And he was like, you a fan of, uh, I don't want to say the artist, but you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like, you a fan of artist 93 songs, and I couldn't. I'm like, bro, I love this nigga, but I can't <laughs> think of three songs. I can't think of three songs. Because we get caught up in the story, but that shows you how powerful a story and packaging is. Marketing will literally make you feel like you love something that you hate and make you feel like you hate something that you love. It's yeah. all about how it's presented. It's the same concept of, hey, how come you listen to his advice when he said that? He said the same shit I said because you came from a different direction. Yeah. Different packaging. Yeah. That's all it is. And that different direction literally could just be a different place. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is all this game is. So then when you see the values that strong on the packaging, on the story, then you start to say, dang, where does the music really lie in the grand scheme of things? Like, dang, he really think he love him. And he can't name his music. Meanwhile, he playing five of my songs daily basis. Don't even know my name. <laughs> that's the that's what we are. That's what we are, because we don't even have to like touch tangibly, like look at your project just to play it. Well, you know, and, and put it in. Like we don't have to do that. Yeah, I think that's what it is, bro. Yeah. Back in there, I had to read the CD. You got to look and be like, I'm on track six. Yep. Oh, that's that's this song now. You just skip right through it, bro. Shit, just come up in the shuffle. Exactly, because you just remembered it just from doing it, not from trying to remember. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Look, tis the game today. <laughs> We don't have any encouraging, uplifting advice from there. Just that's just the reality. And they're like me, you gonna keep doing. It. <laughs> like you said, I ain't an outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's no labels necessary. Episode thirty six or thirty seven. I can't remember right now. <laughs> I'm shy. I'm Corey, and we out. Yeah.